So um, you guys may not have noticed this, but they put their, the names here. So one, I would remember, remember them and I'd recognize them. But as they came up to me, um, they uh, obviously, the attitude and everything, I would know who you are. And I'm not telling all the stories. I've already told Mitch. I said, I'm not telling what happened in the van on the way to the whitewater rafting trip. I'll save that uh, for just him and me. Uh, but what, a, what an absolute uh, delight uh, to be back here. And Mr. President, thank you for, uh, for inviting me. Uh, we're starting our 50th anniversary, and some of you know Larry Tyree. Larry uh, will be at the convocation service. Uh, I think you do reconnect to, to Heritage. So thank, thank you for uh, making me a part of this uh, session today. Um, when I left, it took me a while to get over here because when I left what used to be the Holiday Inn is now Doubletree, the president sent a bicycle for me. <laughs> And, and Lane was on the handlebars. I mean, it's, and it was a little, little cold going over, over that bridge. But I got, I, I got two pieces of, of good news today. Uh, one, you've been sitting a long time. The, the, the length of this adds new meaning to contact hours. I mean, what, what your back end is doing, and I know you're recording this, so I always get in trouble, uh, having to sit here this long. But I'd love for this to be a conversation. Uh, I hear Calhoun in the voices and the laughter, and you must know this great president right here, uh, coming in here uh, from out of state. Sometimes uh, it's good to get new blood in, and those of us that were here, um, and it, I'll close this session today, uh, we're telling you this is this Aspen Award, this is your award. As, as he just said, um, I started here 37 years ago, and I was director of evening programs some of you remember Alice Villison, she called me Dean of Darkness. <laughs> and guess who was my associate in, in that office? It was Wayne Tosh. He was in student affairs. Uh, so we literally uh, started this, this thing uh, together. And the measure of this speech today, if I've, if I've made each of us a little uncomfortable, then I've done my job. That's what we do in higher education. And it was interesting to hear the sheriff folks talk about this. Uh, this horrible tragedy uh, that, that can happen at any campus, and you've got to be prepared. Think about it ahead of time. You don't know what you will do uh, if there's an active shooter uh, that comes in. But as, as one of them said, you decide that. You decide what happens. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, at Santa Fe, we had a student that pulled a gun in the food court, and it was a gambling uh, incident, and they stepped outside, and this kid pulled a gun, thank God, he didn't, and didn't pull the trigger, and then he fled. And guess, guess one of the best embedded uh, security sources you have here, they're called veterans. They know what to do and what not to do. And so these veterans followed him and then lost him in the parking lot. He left, he left the campus. This is one of the few times I've disagreed with our local sheriff, who's wonderful. Uh, she wanted me to go in lockdown. Uh, because we didn't know where he was, and that was just after Virginia Tech. And if you recall, the second incident was, was a real, tra real tragedy. And so finally, uh, Sadie talked me into it, and I went into lockdown. And as you know, the evening classes, everything's uh, filed. And so somebody finally called and said, well, has anybody looked at his apartment? So they went to his apartment, and there's always a little humor. You can find something in anything. And you must know Santa Fe and the University of Florida are in tandem. I mean, we, we do everything together. Um, but this one was a little humorous when all the TV cameras were there. When he walked out, he didn't have a Santa Fe shirt on. He had a UF shirt on. So I, so I didn't tell anybody he wasn't a UF. He was a Santa, Santa Fe student. But uh, and then I'll tell you, and I'm not telling all the war stories. God knows. These folks here, what, what we did together. Uh, is just, just incredible. And a president named James Chastain, uh, who was the best president I've ever known. And what was his genius when, and Jim and I had not met, we talked the other day, what his genius is what he's saying. And you gotta trust him. And that is, you got to let it go. You've got to be secure enough as a leader to let it go with a faculty and staff, and it comes back to you so much better. But you can't appoint a committee and say, now wait a minute, um, go ahead and do your work and then make your own decision. You can't do that. 
that's not his, that's not his background. Uh, before I agreed to come here, I checked him out. I didn't want to come in here and do Alabama politics. I don't do that. That's the reason I'm not here. <laughs> So what is said of him in Kentucky is uh, he was certainly one of the best presidents there. And what happened when he left, and you probably don't know this, the board was trying to buy him. They were trying to keep him. And then when they did the first search for the first president, uh, the search team kept saying, kept telling them, we're trying to find Jim. Okay, and that happened to me in Texas and they went through a failed search and I will never forget this. And the consultant, Jim, called me and said, have you got a brother? <laughs> and I don't, I got three sisters. And I said, well, I've got a son uh, who's uh, actually teaching at William & Mary now. And I said, I promise you, he's not coming to Texas because we moved him there, if you recall, when he was 16. He physically moved, but emotionally, he didn't look at Rice, he didn't look at UT or anything. He was not coming back uh, to Texas. But, but how good this is to be here. And I've been at great colleges, but this is home. Many times, and to this day, and this is going to really mess my mind up being back here, but many times when I think about uh, my college uh, going home or something, I think Decatur. That's God's truth. And I, when I think of uh, a paper, you know, I think of the Decatur Daily. That's still indelibly etched uh, in my mind. And what happens when you raise a family a college family, and I use that at Santa Fe. There's a really special note. Some people are a little bothered by that, but it is a family. And I, I heard it here uh, today. But when you raise a family, Elizabeth and Jackson are who they are because those 10 years of that being here. So I can never, ever thank you enough uh, uh, for that. So no, I love this college, and, and a few things that, that I'll talk about today, now just remind yourself, I love this college. Because I'm going, I'm going to be very honest with it, with us. Because that's what you do. You get when you get old and sappy, uh, you say really what you think, and so that's that's uh, will be my uh, my task uh, for today. So just for those of you that don't know me, uh, I was uh, six years here, uh, dean of darkness, and then chair of the uh, business division, and then to Virginia as provost with Marshall Smith, who had been the academic officer here, who had the security to release the faculty. It wasn't about saying, do this and do this within parameters. It was about releasing us to do our work. And then the best team that I was on, I was just, uh, Carl's sister was on it, uh, Janet Evans, and that was Alice. And Bob Searcy was sort of co called the meetings. And um, we, were allowed to, we were allowed to do things that we could have failed at. But then you got to succeed more than you fail. But we were free uh, to explore ideas, and uh, and uh, uh, and that's what that's what a good college does. In the classroom, if you're not doing that, you're not doing your work. You've got to stretch those things. That's what amazes me with having guns on campus. What are we thinking about? And I know some of you probably support that. It's going to happen in Florida this year. We'll have concealed weapons. I think we're trying to block it in the Senate, but I think I think it may. Uh, may happen. And I know there's no good answer to that because if you're standing there and if you had had a gun, look at Umqua, if someone had, had had a gun in that, maybe as many wouldn't have died. But if Harry Moore is doing his job in an English class, he's creating tension. It's the only time in life where you can absolutely challenge anything. And it's safe. And if you're not doing that as a faculty member, then I would encourage you to do that. Now, somebody packing heat and you're sitting there, you might not do it as vehemently. So I think that, that will take the culture down uh, just a bit. And I'm going to tell the last war story, and I'll get into my text. Um, Dr. Kirkpatrick, the first name I said to Carol, I said Dr. Rhoda Kirkpatrick. And if those of you that don't know her, was director of nursing, a giant in this business, and just received uh, a state award. So um, she got a call one day and said, we got a student bleeding, bleeding on campus. But well, first of all, those of you that are in the nursing program, you know you're not really supposed to do that. But this guy's bleeding. And so Rhoda grabs his tourniquet and runs, you know, to this student. And he's lying on the ground. And she said, well, what's bleeding? Now, this is a true story. I, you can't make this up. 
the kid had sat on a Coke bottle. And you know where this Coke bottle went? And you know what's bleeding? And Rhoda says, what do I do with this tourniquet? What am I, what am I going, that's a true story. What am I going to tie with this thing? And, and then I'll, I'll get on, I'll get on to my thing. So I'll tell you about, about the Aspen thing to just give you a, a little, uh, little insight. But if there's anything that I know, you've got to get the right people. Don't compromise your searches. Um, don't certainly you hire the, hire the best in the pool. They've got to have the credentials, you know. They've got to have a good teaching model if it's faculty. But if they're not who you're looking for, close the search and start over. If you don't get the right people, this is not going to work uh, at its best. And that's true for vice presidents and what you've been through the last few days. Somebody missed it, but you got it right now. You've got to have the right people. And what is that? Well, I, and again, in, I'm in my old age, you got to be reasonably intelligent. I'm sorry. In this business, you got to have some walking around sense. So determine that uh, somehow. You've got to have integrity. And you, when that line is drawn, you know there's no gray in right or wrong. You know what it is. And a work ethic. And then the last thing is, could you have a little joy about the business? And obviously you've got that. You know, one of the things I've realized, and I say to my faculty now, who are the absolute best, honest to God, we've been so blessed. Lee College, strong academic institution. And by the way, it's one of the top 15, uh, 10% in the country now. And then you are. Uh, with the Aspen search, and that's the most empirical. You can't politic this. Uh, you won this on, uh, on, perf uh, on performance. But at the college, you know, I'm finally saying, you don't have to be unhappy to be smart. Have you ever seen people that walk into a classroom and you think, did your puppy die last night? <laughs> this man right here, I got to tell you, I'd love to sit in every class he's ever taught. I know he's got enthusiasm. I know he's got joy uh, about the subject because just being around him inspires me. And that's what faculty, faculty do. And if you can't find the joy, do something else for God's sakes. There are plenty of things you can do other than take, a joy, take the joy away uh, from, from a student. So I get a call at spring break. I get a call from the White House and they say, uh, would you host uh, Joe Biden, Dr. Biden? <laughs> What are you going to say? Well, yeah. And, and like here, you know, with the staff, I, you know, I just make a couple of calls and then it's done. You know, everything uh, falls into place. And what they did, Jim, they still had the campaign staff working, although they had won, what, six years before. And the most obnoxious people in the world, people that works on, on campaigns, you got a 21-year-old telling a provost what to do. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So we, we live through that, and Dr. Biden gets there. And this is a week before the Aspen announcement. And so I thought, well, maybe, you know, some correlation. So just tuck that back because when I finish this little story, you'll, you'll understand. And so went to Washington. I did not know. Josh uh, Weiner had said, um, well, you might be thinking about something you want to say. He said to the top four, uh, you might be thinking about that. So I thought, well, so I did. Uh, I kind of knew where I was going if it were to happen. And then Martha Cantor, Jim, who's one of my very best friends, she was the Leaf Innovation President, and then um, uh, Secretary of Education, not Secretary, but right under that, dear, dear friend. Martha was in the reception room, in the green room, before we go out. And just before I walk out, you know, to where the, in the National Press Club, which I always wanted to be, I always wanted to be there. And she just, this big grin comes on her face. I said, Cantor, what is that about? She didn't say a word. And I know all these people, Templin and all these folks, I knew them, uh, but it was held tightly. And then as this thing happened, um, somebody came up to me and said, would you talk to the national press after this? I thought, well, maybe top four, maybe I'm three. You still, I didn't know. And then the announcement came and I cannot tell you just, it was like a reverse uh, pyramid. The apex was here. It was like you were in my thoughts. It was like 37 years of this work that it came to this. 
And I thought about all the students and the faculty and the staff uh, that had been a part. And I'll be honest with you, it was real emotional. And uh, then I got to get up and talk to the world. This thing was streamed uh, around the world. I got it, Lane, I got a little of it back uh, by the time, and because first thing I said, I said, well, you've got to give me a point of personal privilege. And I talked to the students at Santa Fe, and I said, by the way, you did the work. You put us in this room. And then you know what I did next, like this great president. Not that I'm great, but he is. I said to the employees, every employee from the least, last hired, lowest paid to the trustee, that's what this work is about. If you can't do that, then you don't really belong in a community college because we're democracy's college. We are the way. Certainly you've got the 4.2 that wants to be here. At the University of Florida, the, the average, uh, grade point average is 4.3 this semester. Young Jackson teaches at William & Mary. My Lord, give them a, a CD or a thought and get out of the way. I mean, they've got 4.3s. And we have some of those, but then we have open access. Then what we have to do to get them to college level is a commitment. And I'll suggest to you, it's not a department. It's not a committee. It's one person at a time. And that's, that's pretty expensive uh, sometimes. Your developmental, your president and I talked about developmental uh, education. If you're not having success in that area, don't get them in a swirl. Somebody needs to take that student. I'll tell you kind of what Santa Fe's uh, done. And, and we have had, had success. And by the way, remember when we went to Santa Fe? Uh, I came back from Virginia. I didn't finish that story. I came back as executive vice president. And then we had a technical college on this campus and then a junior college that made Calhoun Community College. Well, having had the experience in Virginia, I said, well, could we be a community college? Could we have one faculty, one payroll, one schedule? And before we had two, you can't imagine that. You can't imagine that being, being the case, but that, well, that's, that's exactly uh, what we had. And Alice Village, and you guys remember, put that, I'm, guys, I'm sorry, those of you who haven't been here, uh, I'll do this all day. I'll, I re, uh, refer to these folks who, who were giants in this business, and we put it together and we said, well, this is probably uh, better, better for students. But anyway, Phil uh, finished the Joe Biden, so we go, have the service, they announce it, and then we go over to the White House for a meeting. And with all that I've done nationally and everything, I still have not met this president. I want to meet President Obama, and I will before. And I've told Cantor, who's doing the uh, free tuition thing, Jim, you know, she's, and so I said, a prayer breakfast or something, get me in. You know, I want to meet this, uh, this great president. And so, uh, so we walk in the room, and uh, Jill Biden, you know, is there. But before that, I had gone to the restroom. It had been a long time. This Aspen thing, when you get it, just be prepared, Jim. It's two hours. And all I wanted to know was one decision. I mean, it was just nauseating. It, it took so long. And when she walked in, she came in and spoke, and Bob Templin, who was at Northern Virginia Community College, whom I knew in Virginia and have known nationally, uh, he was sitting next to me. That's where Jill Biden teaches. She teaches English, English at Northern Virginia Community College. And so, and again, remember, a week before I'd been with her, and so she looks at Bob, hey, Bob, Bob. She didn't even look at me. I thought, what is that about? I mean, this is pretty ugly. I mean, certainly you remember in a week what this looks like. And so fast forward, it's announced we're in the White House. I went to the restroom and when I walk out, her staff is standing there. And the first thought, how did you know I was in the restroom? <laughs> now I'm in the White House, so I, I figured, you know, cameras or whatever. They knew I was in the restroom and said, would you come with us? And I said, well, sure, you know. <laughs> but I was floating at that time, like, whatever, I'm with you. And so um, we went in, and I thought I'd get to meet the president. I thought it was uh, what it was about. Uh, but Vice President Biden, we went in his office, and I thought, what do I say, you know? And MSNBC, um, which some of us watch, watch occasionally, when he was on it years ago, he was one of the few that actually answered questions. He's a very smart man. And so that's what we talked about was his experience. And then we walk, walked back uh, to the meeting. And here's what I really do think, which I know Calhoun Community College is. I know Santa Fe's that way. And Lee College got to that in about 10 years. 
uh, with, a, with a really well-credentialed, strong faculty. It doesn't matter if you don't start there. Um, but you've got to be learning-centric. Uh, the police force has got to see some correlation to learning. Student affairs has got to see something related to learning. And by the way, student affairs is not a discipline. It is a service function. That's what I do. I'm service. And so at Santa Fe College, what we've done, we've blended that. It's, it's, and, and you can't do this work uh, without student affairs. You can't do it without advising. The first moment that student enters the college through probably an online application, somebody's got to engage them in a real and personal way. And if you really are to make a difference. And then once that happens, the faculty and student affairs have got to be in tandem. So let me tell you what I did. And, and everybody knows me, knows I'm faculty centric. That's just what I've done. I don't know if I learned that from James or I just, that's just where it started. And one of the real reasons I accepted this, I told Jim, I'll take no money. I wouldn't do this. Just get these folks back. Uh, because this is a really busy time of the year. Uh, but Lane and I flew in uh, late Friday afternoon and we've had a great time visiting this weekend. And then to be with you today is, uh, is, is such, such a treasure. But all of us serve the, need of, the needs of learning and that's what, what we do. So Mahatma Gandhi said this, a nation's culture resides in the heart and in the souls of its people. And then this coach at Clemson, you may have seen him after the Nor uh, Notre Dame game, um, uh, Dave O'Sweeney, you know what he said? He said, I can give you a place to live. I can give you food. I can't give you heart and soul. If a college, if a classroom, if an individual does not have heart and soul for the work that we're doing, it doesn't matter achieving the dream. It doesn't matter who your president is. It doesn't matter who your chair is. So the culture of a college, which I know the foundation is here, and I've, I know the faculty and the staff that's been hired since then uh, has done some mistakes were made. I read the article. You know, I wasn't walking in here not knowing uh, what has happened over the last two years. The culture has not changed. How many of you left? And so that rich experience that, that you have built on it's what you reclaim. And that's, that's what we do in individuals. When you have issues uh, that you think, where am I going with this? What do you resort to? You resort to that, that foundation uh, that has made you uh, who you are. So at Santa Fe, we, we sort of pride ourselves, and you know, a lot of people use excellence. It doesn't matter if you don't live it. And to me, it's sort of the 10% rule. I mean, there are a lot of good colleges, but the Aspen winners, and I know this college is it, it's the 10%. I mean, anybody can do good. Do you decide to do the best? And that's the 10%. And that's what separates, uh, separates college. So Aspen recognizes, as you know, here it's pretty simple. You know, it's about completion. Do students, com students start in developmental and complete, or are they just in this world? And again, I suggest too, it's one-on-one, -on -one, somebody thinking, well, maybe the, I believe in this person. Maybe, uh, maybe they can do it. And then number two is student learning outcomes. That is so hard to measure in humanities and English, but it can be done. Have a conversation about it. It can be done, but look at who's... Uh, obtain those concepts and who are living them out uh, in other, other areas. And those of you, I can't remember what we called it here, technical education. I know we dropped vocational probably years ago, same thing. We changed uh, titles to sound better. Um, but technical education, one of the easiest places uh, to measure. And it's measured, do they go to work in a good job? Uh, the person at the restaurant this morning with whom I was speaking, uh, I said, um, where are you going to college? She was waiting at the table, and she said, well, I went to Santa Fe about 10 years ago, 
And this is a function of my age. She said, well, I got $2 that are going. I thought, my gosh, you look like you could just barely get in yourself. She looked like she was 18 to me, and I know that's a function of my age. But her two daughters, I said, how about you? And she said, well, I'm taking a certificate. And it's not a ladder, it's a lattice. Think about these students that come in. But she's getting started. And guess where she's starting? She's coming here uh, to do that. But somebody has got to meet her in an authentic, real uh, way and walk with her to, to a better, better place. And then lastly, uh, uh, minorities and low-income students. So let's, let's just be honest, okay? Uh, and this is one of the toughest topics, uh, too. As I look across the room, um, you've got good diversity here, so congratulations. You do what you intend. And if the faculty and staff of this institution doesn't lo look like pretty close to right at 19% minority, you need to do something. And it's not hi just hiring minorities. The worst form of discrimination is preferential treatment. Don't do that. But don't tell me they're not qualified men and women that would love to work at Calhoun Community College from anywhere in the world. So close the search until you get diversity uh, in all areas. It must, the faculty and staff must look like the students uh, that are coming in. So here's what I found at Calhoun. You gotta, you gotta take some risks sometimes. So if you don't look at data, that's, uh, you know, I'm gonna do the Aspen thing. So I, I had them run me, me a report. African-American men were persisting, I call a criminal level. I mean, it was just, and guess where they're going if they don't succeed? Many are going to crime. And I said, what do we do about this? So here's what I did. I called all the African-American men in my office, and I said, there's about 40 uh, at the college, and I said, well, what's going on here? You know, this is not my experience. And I said, here's $10,000. You guys go off and research it. Call me in. Again, you got to release it before it comes back. And here's, what, here's the result of it. And I know 44% persistence is about the average of all colleges. That's where we started. We're at 60% now of African-American men persisting through Santa Fe College. So guess what we named that, what they named that program. I said, you got to call it, son. By the way, we've never found an acronym that we didn't love at Santa Fe College. It's worse than the Army. It's just nuts. <laughs> but uh, what, what, we, what they titled that uh, was My Brother's Keeper. You know what the president? Yeah. So when I meet him, I'm going to tell him, Mr. President, you plagiarized. We named My Brother's Keeper long before he did this national, uh, national program. It is race-specific. I've gotten away with it, Jim. It's race-specific. It's gender-specific. Uh, specific, and the board has stood with me, uh, and the college has stood with me. In, in meetings like this, we talk about it. What are you solving? Are you solving, go to the, the, the greatest challenge and solve that, and guess what happens? And then the students, the student uh, body at Santa Fe, they have $3 million, they have student activities fees. I don't touch that, that's their money. Guess what? Uh, there was uh, a committee for my sister's keeper, Okay, and so guess what? That wouldn't have formed had we been, and you know what we do. Uh, Hispanic students in Texas had 30% Hispanic, and they didn't persist at the same level. Well, guess what, Wayne, what we started doing, financial aid? That's Spanish speakers in the audience, and one of the things about that culture, they eat, kind of like the South. If they have a meeting, they eat, and so we put out great, we've had more tacos and whatever you can ever imagine. Go to where people are. And then when you create that relationship, and then all of a sudden, guess what happens? Guess what happens? Uh, then they trust you. And then they'll work harder. And, but you've got to be honest. If, if they are reading at an eighth, eighth grade level, they've got to get that up. That's the hardest work. In business and industry, that's hard for them. It's hard for politicians to understand. Uh, you and I know that distance from eighth grade to doing college, college level work. So that's, that's what you look for. So um, we kind of took those words to heart at Santa Fe and started to work on real issues, internationalizing the college. Lane and I, I interviewed a week to the day after 9-11. What a platform. 
As a matter of fact, the, the planes didn't start flying until a couple of days uh, before we were to be there. And so I got there, and I wasn't looking. As Jeff Hockaday was, I wasn't looking. I love my, t I hear. I wasn't planning to leave here. I didn't want to leave Texas. I, that faculty and staff, we were in almost 10 years. And then I walked into a room, and this is what I look, I walked into the room at Santa Fe, and uh, faculty and staff were there the first thing. I was home. And I knew that they were ready to go somewhere. And then I interviewed with a trustee. Well, that was like talking to my family. And so all of a sudden I thought, well, you know, if I were to make another change, maybe this, this uh, would, be, would be it. And then I said, who's faculty senate president here? Who's, who's the president of the senate, faculty senate? Oh, she didn't care enough to be here. I got that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the president of the senate at the college, um, passed through that reception line and I said, I'm not coming here unless you fill the room this afternoon. If I can't look into the eye of the faculty and staff and find out, you know, obviously it works well with the trustees, those of you who've done this business, uh, if you can't go in and answer any questions, you shouldn't be applying. And, and Jim blew it out of the water uh, when he was interviewed. But it's the people with whom you work that get the work done. And that couldn't have, that couldn't have, uh, have really uh, gone any better. So the opportunity came for us, and, and I know every college that I've been to, Jim, Sachs, when I came here the first time, we were, had a Sachs visit coming. I went to Virginia, a Sachs team was coming. I went to uh, Texas, a Sachs team's coming. That's the truth, you couldn't make this up, it's so bad. <laughs> and then when I went to Santa Fe, guess what? The sax team was coming. And so uh, at Santa Fe, we, we, and you can imagine, uh, we got through it, uh, didn't get the number of accommodations. We'd, I'd been there two months, and it was one of the really rough meetings. I, with the chair, I said, what? Because it, it was one of those things where the chair sent um, uh, the, the committee to the uh, personnel office and said, you will find people that don't have the credentials. Because the first scan, they didn't find any. That's, that's the kind of thing, that's what gives sax. Um, a bad name. But with this, it was coming, and so uh, the way you would do here, a committee, committee was formed and said, well, what is it? And it took about a year. I thought, can you just decide on a topic? You know, and I, I was attention deficit, which these guys know before they knew what it was. I said, well, just decide? I mean, look, I don't really care. Let's go somewhere. It took about a year, and they named it um, Quality Enhancement, a Qu Quality Enhancement Plan. And even with the numbers that we already had, uh, here's, here's what, it, what it did. Uh, we chose two major components, an early academic warning system. And that's not just student affairs. Uh, certainly with the technology that we have. Do you, do you have a legacy system, Jim, or PeopleSoft, DataTel? We do use a banner. Your banner? Okay. Well, Santa Fe still has a legacy system, uh, which makes it a little easy. We, we can monitor it. It's like a aircraft carrier, carrier turning it once we decided, but it does every, everything we want. So um, it was a little easier for us to change that. So when a student first indicated uh, they were interested um, in the college, then we are, in, we are intentional. We go to them. We don't assume they know what an academic credit. Think about the students that come in here that don't know what an academic credit is. They think the bank's coming after them. Some, if you don't know what it is, don't assume people. So um, with, with that first thing and then with um, orientation, how many days, it is a little warm in here. If somebody could cut the air down, are you warm? I ain't firing you up that much yet. I ain't even got to the good stuff, good stuff yet. Um, but how many days of orientation do you have here? How many hours? You know how much William and Mary has? And as I already said, a monkey could teach those students. They have five days of orientation. You know how many the University of Florida has? They have four days. Those students are so well prepared. So what does that say to us? So we're going back uh, this fall to having a day of orientation where you talk about real issues. And then some of it will be online, and, and Santa Fe has students from every, every county. So somebody living in Miami, 
you know, Dade County might not be able uh, to get there, but uh, it's still the, the interchange, I think, uh, between two people. And then um, four, here's what we do with the students that are coming in, and it's these guys right here. Prep writing, freshman composition. By the way, I had to ask the provost last night what these were. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> Elementary algebra and intermediate algebra, those four gateway courses, if you don't get through them successfully, what else matters? And so we started with 10% and then 20%. This fall we'll be at 40% of our freshmen coming in. If you can't compute and you can't read and you can't critically think at some level, how are you going to do nursing? How are you going to do anything? So I suggest that's one thing uh, that you look at. Don't assume people have these and don't pass them through. This is not about enrollment. This is about completion. This is about, and these colleges were built on access. Just open the door and come on in. Open access, but not open exit. And good colleges and universities that do that are, are the one, by the way, that care the most about students, okay? So you may have to reorder some things uh, to get, get, what, get what you want. And the other thing is, I've already mentioned, is shared governance. Um, and I've already checked him out. This man right here uh, told me on the phone the other day that uh, he brought the Senate back. I mean, and he can't be in the room when you're doing, but what are you talking about in those meetings? Now, some of the things that happened here, you got, you got to confront that. You need to be protesting. You need to, you're past it now, but when those sort of things, when the integrity of the institution is challenged, you got to be there. I was in a meeting with students the other day and I said, why aren't you protesting? Our age group, my Lord, we, we disagree with everything. <laughs> and then the, the president of the Senate came in and now they're protesting. I thought, what did I do? You know, <laughs> but what they were protesting, I've already decided, you can have it. You know, but do you care enough? Do you care enough to disagree? You know whom you really love? You know whom you really love? It's the people you're really honest with. Think about your family. Think about whom you really care enough to say, this is not working. This is not right. So do you select those students that, that you really believe in? Faculty, are you, do you get a, a roster before you can get this uh, entry uh, uh, correct? Do you get a roster and you say, now, I know a third of these. I'm going to be so tough the first few. I know they're not going to be here. Don't do that. If you don't engage them, guess what? They're gone. Look at the numbers. You, you pass, them, pass them through here. And so I think faculty have, have a great interest. And, and I know they're faculty at Santa Fe. But guess what? Through in a college enhancement, uh, enhancement program, they're being confronted. Guess who's leading that? English faculty member. Her name is Rhonda Morris. Every time I see her, Mr. President, I'm going back to the classroom. Well, she'll go back with me screaming because here's what she, and she will, because I respect her highly. Actually, she was hired after I got there. But what she does, she goes to a faculty member and she says, wait a minute, you didn't give some tests within the first two weeks? So the student didn't, doesn't know? Now, if I did this, well, that I would, would be a revolution. <laughs> if a president stood in front of a group of faculty and said, you mean, you didn't care enough about those students to give them a signal, you know, of whether they could be su successful or not. And then once you know that, did you call the advising office? Did you get a counselor? Counselor? How many of our students come in with mental health issues? Okay, and that's, I see the police chief left. Uh, that's, that's what we fear the most. Um, and, and with our counselors who are, uh, are certified and I, I resisted because this is tricky but just about six months ago, um, allowed them to go into the mental health counseling within their qualifications because the need is so great. And we have a task force that, look, we have about 20 students that we're tracking just about all the time who've exhibited some aberrant uh, behavior. And not a police force, not watching them, uh, waiting for them to fail, but to be honest and then to engage them in areas that matter. But sh shared governance, you've got to get that right. Um, so an overarching theme for us uh, as this whole um, 
quality matters uh, thing came was a gap existed between skill sets uh, of many of our students and we were just kind of well waiting for them to leave and if we do that that's fine but that's intentional uh, you know if you don't get them uh, prepared in those, those four, four courses. So how could we systematically connect struggling students with our, our services? And that, that's when everything uh, came together between advising uh, and so forth. Now here's another example. Got to get the right person. Student Affairs I had a resignation of a wonderful woman. Some of you remember Portia Taylor, a national leader. A wonderful, wonderful woman. She retired and I thought, what am I going to do? How do you replace somebody like that? And so once a year, I go, as a matter of fact, it's March the 8th uh, for 2016, I go into class. And in Florida, you can put on shorts or jeans and boots. I hadn't worn flip-flops yet, but in Florida, the kids wear flip-flops when it's 30 degrees outside. I mean, it's stupid, but they do it. But, <laughs> but I go to class, I go to class once a year. And I'd been in this, this professor's because she invited me. Uh, at convocation January 4th, so I'll say, who will, who will be crazy enough to have me in? And I asked them, don't identify me. And I'm dressed, you know, just like as close as I can to look like a student. Like, yeah, how, who many, how many am I fooling? But, so I go and I sit in the back of the room and I say, don't identify me. Please don't identify me. At, at the end, if you'd like to, uh, we can. And Dr. Brown blew me away. She walked in like a Randy Cross. She was, man, she was carrying a baton. She, I mean, and she knew every student's name uh, within the first two weeks. Every student's name. And I was sitting there just blown back. I knew she was good. Um, but it was the relationship. Obviously, she's impeccably credentialed. PhD, uh, Florida, went to A&M from Philadelphia. Uh, had had an African-American woman, had had an experience you don't want to know about but then committed, she could teach at any university, committed her life to doing the good work. Faculty, okay? And so I called in and I said, um, Naima, I want you to be uh, interim vice president. I don't play games with searches. So I wasn't just a pointer. I said, I want you to be the uh, vice, interim vice president of student affairs. No, sir. She said, I teach. And she said, when other little girls were playing with their dolls, I was teaching mine. <laughs> okay, so her whole life she committed to it. So I said, well, all right, go away. So I waited, waited a little while, and I called back in. And I said, Dr. Brown, I really, um, I need for you to step in, uh, your leadership and whatever, her enthusiasm, whatever. She said, no. Third time. I didn't really play fairly. I said, how many do you have this semester? 90, 100? said, what about 25,000 students that you can influence? That the results of your ethic, your caring, your genius, your preparation, what if you employed that? And then here's another thing, Jim, that I, I found, and double negative intended, you English folks, she didn't know what not to ask, okay? She didn't know the questions. She was a master learner, and she was a master developer and a master uh, presenter of learning but in an area she didn't know the questions not to ask and now we had a little marriage at the college okay the provost chief academic officer and I, I didn't I'm not Alice Wilson I didn't do a little orphan nanny and all this old crazy thing she did but at, at convocation uh, we had a marriage okay and so the provost uh, and the academic officer I mean, in the student affairs, Dr. Brown symbolically said, kind of, we're in this together. I didn't know where this was going. Uh, I knew I had the right people in the room to do it. We wouldn't be an Aspen. That was three years ago. We wouldn't be an Aspen if all of a sudden that line is so blurred between student affairs. She knows. They love her. At first, it was a little uneasy. You know, um, some of the student affairs folks sent me notes like, well, she doesn't know whatever. She doesn't know financial aid. Well, a clerk can read the Federal Registry. Now, I'm, who have not just insulted who have in financial aid? It's not that simple. As a matter of fact, it changes every week. But the same, it can be learned, but it's our emphasis in every facet of the college about learning. And so at every conversation, convocation, and then I did a national search, I don't play with those. There's nobody even, and, and people want to work at Santa Fe. 
So we had exceptional candidates, uh, but nobody really competed. She got the job legitimately uh, because she had the heart, she had the soul, she had the credential, uh, and she had learned it. She will be a president uh, in two, three years uh, because she's advanced. And she's always telling me, uh, I'm teaching. So she teaches, she teaches sociology as her discipline. So she goes back in the classroom and I'm sure teaches uh, honors classes. Uh, but you've got, got to get uh, the right people. And then a difference is especially pronounced um, in the minority students that I've talked about. You've got to be honest about that. Look, look at your numbers. Don't skirt over them and say, uh, you know, that's a different, you know, they had a different background. Don't do that. Uh, that's, that's unconscionable. That's what common, typical colleges do. Go to the students uh, that, that have uh, the greatest need. And so navigating the college experience revolutionized the way uh, we conduct academic advising. Uh, in the past, this was done in a walk-in basis. When you walk in now, somebody grabs you. And we're intentional. This is not William and Mary. This is not the University of Alabama, Roll Tide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just offended half the room in here that are Auburn fans. And Young Jackson is, when, when we were here, uh, actually he was born in graduate school, and I was you know, one of the youngest PhDs, and so I went over to Bear Bryant and I said, would you sign uh, Young Jackson? To, and so he did, and he said, saving your spot, you know, at Bama. You know where that is? That's in our little Gulf home, because Lane's dad took him to an Auburn game and this is true. I, I told him it was so bad, he was looking for cows to be grazing at intermission I mean, at halftime. I mean, that's a true story. And today, we're texting, uh, texting through. Why I told that story, I have no idea. But now every student, every student at the college has uh, an advisor, advisor from the very, very first thing. Now, here's what we're doing now, because that's working. How about high schools? If you don't have that conversation, and by the way, the ninth grade is too late uh, to have it. If you don't have that conversation with the public schools, so now, because what we're doing, and this is the toughest thing we've done, is navigating to college. And guess who's doing it? The faculty and staff are going to these schools. When you get a math faculty together, that's, uh, get out of the way. When you get an English faculty together, history, what? Get out of the way. They'll, they'll figure out uh, how to do it. When I was in Virginia, Dr. Hockaday was chancellor, and he called me and he said, I'd love for you and De Croce to, it was a quarter system like you, what we had here, and he said, I'd love for you to convert it to a semester system. And by the way, textbooks are written that way. It was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, I'm a dean right, in Virginia, and I said, well, sure. And I was thinking like we had three years, talking about financial aid, thinking about changing financial aid to, uh, from quarter, I'm thinking about textbooks, thinking about schedules. And so I said, well, sure. And he said, by the way, we're doing this in a year. I said, no, it can't be done. I didn't tell him that, but I told DeCroce. But here's what happened when the nursing faculty, which was the first, raise your hands, nursing faculty. You're the toughest in this room, I gotta tell you. You're tough. Because guess what? I finally rationalized, you're in a zero defect business. Your students cannot make a mistake. So I went out with nursing faculty, the first group that met, and guess what? They, it was the best professional development probably ever, because what were they doing? Talking about their discipline. And they were in charge, and we literally did that, uh, merged it to a semester system uh, really, really quickly. And so do you have uh, faculty that talk about the good students? And students are not as prepared as they used to be? Guess who what? Who may not be quite as prepared as you used to be? It's about staying up with technology. You know, Amelia Kate, and, every, and you know, a person always finds a way to talk about their grandchildren. Amelia Kate was our first. She takes my iPad with that little left hand. She can do more with it than I can. That's where these students are coming, okay? At the University of Florida, and, and the new president is a wonderful, came from Cornell, wonderful guy, dear, dear friend. Actually, his investor here is next Friday, and we do everything together. And when, when he came, I thought, well, how will, how will he do this? The previous president, every time he got in a public meeting or a state meeting, guess what he talked about? We got more good students this year. Okay? 
I don't qualify. If a student comes into Santa Fe College, they're equal. Some require more work uh, than others. And, and Aspen is about, do you engage those as seriously or do you find them somewhere else, somewhere else to be? And so technology, as I begin to bring this thing down, I'd love to get to a few questions you have, if you have any. Uh, when when uh, technology has got to be your friend, the first Aspen group came in. By the way, we should have won it two years ago, in my opinion, if it had been on just pure, purely in, empirical data. But I talked to Josh Weiner, and I said, we're not doing again this thing if you're rewarding flares. And particularly one of the college had a really dramatic program, one program, and it's about total success uh, of students. But when they came in, we have a degree audit. It, when you enroll it at Santa Fe, then, um, and they found this, we'd had it, you know, for several years. But if you're majoring in engineering and then you want to major, you know, in nursing, we'll just put it in It says, well, you've had these courses and here's what you need. And by the way, here's what's offered next semester. Here are the times. So technology um, needs, needs to be your friend in this early alert system uh, that we have. Uh, with navigating the college experience, that's the first thing that happens. A faculty member gets it, and then a faculty member, Mitch, can come in and say, wait a minute, two weeks in, sends the advisor, and I saw where you're going back, not only do you have bicycles, but you're going back uh, to assigned advisors. How did we lose that? I don't know. It was about enrollment or whatever. But a person, it's a relationship. So you're doing that, and that was, that was a part of, of what we did. So uh, we have chosen to stay with the uh, legacy system because simply uh, it, works, it works for us. Um, and then, and again, I'm, I'm skipping. I'm, I can't tell you how many drafts of this uh, I've had. Um, but uh, summing it up, uh, by the time a student leaves Santa Fe regardless of the degree or program, and this is not sexual harassment, somebody has touched them. Somebody has touched them in a real <laughs> professional way. You understand what I'm saying? They entered their heart, they entered their soul, and said, I know you can do that. That's what I was saying to the young woman this morning. She had lost, she was pleased with her daughters, but she didn't see the opportunity for herself. And I couldn't think of a way to get her name and phone number. I'd had one of you call her. Because she thought, oh, there's a sick old man here that's, because I was in a, I had a baseball cap on sitting there going over, over my notes. But when she gets her, if you're really serious about this, somebody will meet her where she is and walk, walk to a better, better place. So we have always been um, about students doing well. At Santa Fe, and I'll tell you this, when, when I came back from Virginia, we were merging these two colleges, and some of you are probably on that trip. We took a bus ride, guess where? Santa Fe, it was Santa Fe Community College then. And by the way, we offer eight baccalaureate degrees, and I, I tried to keep the name. I was chair of the Council of Presidents that year, and we celebrate. So what we say now, the name has changed. We're still the community's college, but I couldn't, couldn't keep it. And I don't know where the state is uh, in baccalaureate degrees, you will be doing that. And know the universities, they'll have apoplexy about it. Uh, but here's the issue. Those of you in technical education, what's advancing? Technology, international, international affairs. So a baccalaureate degree is needed. And that's what our eight baccalaureate degrees are. They're applied baccalaureate degrees. The University of Florida is never going to offer those. And by the way, they sign a letter uh, of support of every degree uh, that we've offered. So there's a way. Uh, there's a way to do that. So um, in, in closing, uh, as I said to those uh, faculty um, and staff at Santa Fe, and I've said, I've said this to 1,300 uh, third grade teachers the other, elementary is first, second, third, 1,300 that I spoke to in Gainesville the other day, but I told them first, I said, I thought, well, I've got to wake them up. I said, I'm sleeping with one of you. Lane Sasser is an elementary school teacher. <laughs> and so uh, once they woke up, you know, you'd hear, oh, man, what, who is it? You know? <laughs> and then I said, we're in this together. We wouldn't have been an Aspen winner. You had these students uh, at some time if you were here. 
uh, nine, ten years ago. But I said to them, this is your war. And I've said this many times, never have I been this sincere. If I've had any success in this business, if I've had any, if my colleges have had any success, this is where it was learned. This culture uh, is where I learn when you free it, when you literally free it, whether it's an individual uh, or a student. When, when think about somebody you love. When I love Lane Saster, if I tried to put parameters to her, Lane, don't talk to this person, whatever, for 40 or something years, it wouldn't come back to me. You can't stifle love. And so it's the same thing uh, with students and with colleges. Cultures matter uh, because uh, it's free. And this president right here, um, you won't know until eight, nine, five years, but I've got to tell you, he's got the heart and the soul because I, I wouldn't be here uh, with some of these other presidents that pass through here. I promise you. But when he called with what it said, what he said, uh, then I would come in here and meet uh, with the Calhoun Community College faculty and staff again. So this is your award.